says the intention is if you're running against an incumbent or someone of greater means that you can leverage your small dollar support and maximize that by receiving public funds public money levels the political playing field let me also say this public money for an election um also means that you're not taking big money that means if you're getting money from the state that means you're not getting any money from uh, people who would give you campaign donations with ulterior motives to say, well, if you give me this, then I'll give you that. This means that not only are it saves the voters money because then they also are using this money from the public finance and elections, but also you uh, do not get uh, this uh, temptation from the corporations in order to fund your campaign which means that you actually are more beholden to the voters than you are to corporations. So you see where I'm going with this, right? Elections should be publicly funded. Full stop. They should not be funded through PACs. They should not be funded through super PACs. They should not be funded via public, I'm sorry, via private dollars. It should all be public dollars. Why? Because money should not be influencing our elections. It allows for democracy and freedom to reign instead of money and big business interests. Well, that's also on the ballot here in Florida. This is going to be the final uh, amendment in the series that we are covering for 2024, Florida Ballot Measures uh, Amendment. So we are going to be getting into that right now, actually. We're talking about Amendment 6. Let's get into it. So is Florida Amendment 6 repeal of public financing for statewide campaigns amendment? So it says Florida Amendment 6, the repeal of public financing for statewide campaigns amendment is on the ballot in Florida. As a as a legislatively referred constitutional amendment on November 5th, 2024. A yes vote supports repealing the state constitutional provision that provides for public financing of campaigns for those running for elective statewide office who agree to campaign spending limits. A no vote opposes repealing the constitutional provision that allows for public financing of campaigns Therefore, continuing to allow public campaign financing for statewide candidates who agree to certain spending limits. So here's the overview. Since the amendment will repeal Section 7 of Article 6 of the Florida Constitution, which provides for public campaign financing for statewide candidates who agree to spending limits. Currently, under Article 6, Campaign, I'm sorry, public campaign financing is available for candidates for the offices of governor, attorney general, chief financial officer, and commissioner of agriculture. Public financing in Florida is available for candidates for the offices of governor and for elected cabinet members, attorney general, chief financial officer, and commissioner of agriculture. To qualify for public for campaign financing, a candidate must one, not be running unopposed. Two, agree to expenditure limits. Three, raise $150,000 for gubernatorial candidates or $100,000 for cabinet candidates. Four, limit loans or contributions from the candidate's personal funds to $25,000 and limit con contributions from political parties to $250,000. And five, Report campaign financing data to the Division of Elections and submit to a post-election financial audit. The public campaign financing program is funded by the General Revenue Fund. In 2022, the expenditure limit for gubernatorial candidates receiving public campaign financing was $30.29 million, which is $2 per registered voter. And the limit for cam cabinet candidates was $15.14 million, or $1 per registered voter. <laughs> it says, what's the history of public campaign financing in Florida? Florida voters adopted Amendment 11 in 1998, which provided for public campaign financing for statewide offices. 
the amendment was approved with 64.12% of voters and in favor and 35.88% opposed. In 2010, the Florida State Legislature referred Amendment 1 to the ballot to repeal the constitutional provision providing for public campaign financing. The amendment received 52.49% of the vote in favor, but was defeated because constitutional amendments in Florida require a 60% supermajority to be adopted. Florida is one of 12 states with a public campaign finance program for candidates running for governor and lieutenant governor. So the supporters uh, says this amendment was passed along partisan lines, Republicans in favor and Democrats opposed. So Travis Hudson, who is the state senator, says we're putting it to the voters to make the decision on whether we should spend general revenue funds helping candidates run for office or on other means that could help our constituents. I think it's absurd that anybody will be able to use taxpayer dollars for the purposes of campaigning. So those are dollars we could spend on things like education, things like healthcare and water projects, beach restoration, all that stuff. Yeah, they don't care about that shit. Uh, State Senator Tina Polsky said, who voted against the amendment and the Senate said is very clear that the Republican Party has a lot more money funding outside groups, special interest groups who will help pay for campaigns than the Democratic Party has in Florida. As a result, it seems that this will be a negative for Democratic candidates. Um, this would also be a negative for third party candidates, but Tina Polsky isn't talking about that. See how this is very binary thinking? They don't ever th think about third parties. I think, I, honestly, I think that, in fact, not only should uh, we publicly finance elections here in the state, but I think the threshold should actually be lowered. So that it makes it easier for third parties to be able to get their public financing. Imagine if uh, somebody was running for governor of the state and they got $30 million to do their advertising and every, you know, the things that they need to do in order to uh, get their name and support out throughout, throughout the state. Uh, supporters is Travis Hudson. Um, so these are the supporters to opposition. Uh, let's look at uh, Anna Escamani. Says the intention is if you're running against an incumbent or someone of greater means that you can leverage your small dollar support and maximize that by receiving public funds. Public money levels the political playing field. Let me also say this: public money for an election um, also means that you're not taking big money. That means if you're getting money from the state, that means you're not getting any money from uh, people who would give you campaign donations with ulterior motives to say, well, if you give me this, then I'll give you that. This means that not only are it saves the voters money because then they also are using this money from the public finance and elections, but also you uh, do not get uh, this uh, temptation from the corporations in order to fund your campaign, which means that you actually are more beholden to the voters than you are to corporations. So you see where I'm going with this, right? Now, the Democrats say, well, you know, we're against this, but at the same time, the Democrats still take big money too. My thing is, is this is actually really good for third parties because I would love to see a third party person run for governor of this state and run to the left of the Democrats. Because if we got that, interestingly enough, the Democrats would freak out and this would not be good for them. Also, on top of that, the Democrats would actually hate it because a lot of the ballot measures that we have passed were actually to the left, the Democrats. The ballot measures that we look at, like for instance, $15 an hour minimum wage, we gave former felons the ability to vote again. These are left policies. We're literally, 
we're about, we are literally on the precipice of legalizing recreational marijuana. Florida is more left than people think. The problem is, is that the Democrats basically fail because they're trying to be more like Republicans. So a lot of people just go, well, I might as well just go with the real thing. When in reality, if you put out actual left policies, policies, not candidates, policies. A lot of Floridians, they'll actually go for those policies. You don't think healthcare for all wouldn't be a winning message here in Florida? Oh, baby. Oh, my goodness. Healthcare for all. And also, my, my idea about uh, a state income tax for anybody making over $250,000 a year. So, yes, uh, Roger also wanted me to clarify this. And, yes, I this is one idea is the state income tax uh, for Florida would be, you know, um, any dollar above $250,000, you get tax for state income tax. And that will be any dollar above $250,000 in wealth. I'm not talking about income, I'm talking about wealth. So if you have things like uh, assets, stocks, bonds, things like that, you will get taxed on them. Anything over $250,000. Yeah. So let's say you made $250,001. Let's say that and somebody like me, I would be like, the tax would be like 30%, right? So you would get taxed on that $1 above $250,000. Meaning, instead of making $250,001, it will be $250,070. See what I mean? And then every dollar above that, you know, of course, you would make more money off of that. So that the people who are super rich literally help pay for the wealth that they steal or they extract or exploit it. So yeah, that was just the whole thing. But thank you very much for uh, holding my feet to the fire on that one, Roger. Um, so Public campaign financing programs in the United States. So Florida's well in 12 states. Uh, you have Arizona, Connecticut, Hawaii, Maine, Maryland, Massachusetts, Michigan, Minnesota, New Jersey, Rhode Island, and Vermont. Um, five states offer campaign, public campaign financing for state legislative offices, which is Arizona, Connecticut, Hawaii, Maine, and Minnesota. Two states offer campaign finance programs for state Supreme Court candidates in New Mexico and West Virginia. Actually, I think that's a good idea. We also should do it for uh, state Supreme Courts. I think we should do it for circuit courts and appellate courts, too. I think we should do public financing for all elections. Hell, we should do public financing for municipal elections, too. If you're running for mayor, if you're running for city comptroller, I don't care. You should be publicly financed. Um, I want to get pu all public money into elections. I want to take all private money out of the election process. So, yeah, here it is. So, um, this is pretty much uh, self-explanatory, straightforward. Um, shout out to Katie Lewis um, for also sharing this as well. Katie Lewis uh, wrote an article about uh, the ballot initiatives for Florida. Um, so I'll also share this as well. It says proposing to repeal a provision for the state constitution would require public financing for campaigns of candidates for elective statewide office to agree to campaign spending limits. Uh, so He says in his note, in his thoughts, he says, though on the surface, the Senator frames the reason 
as putting the public's interest first, separating the fundamental benefit of public funds for campaigns from the citizens. However, removing the ability for a working class citizen to acquire much needed funding to fairly run against the likes of an incumbent or wealthy candidate is most definitely not in the public's best interest. The opposition, which includes the Florida League of Women Voters, voices this same opinion. And it says, after the 2010 Supreme Court decision in Citizens United versus FEC, followed by the D.C. Circuit Court decision with SpeechNow.org versus FEC, not only are corporations and wealthy individuals able to limitlessly fund political campaigns with through super PACs, political action committees, but also donate to said super PACs with no limit. The, these court decisions essentially tip the scale for political representation in favor of the uber rich. The function of state public campaign funds is to grant members of the proletariat or workers or average people who aspire to represent their fellow workers in government at a more level playing field against big dollar candidates. A vote in opposition to this amendment protects public funds for campaigning. So with that being said, I rec I'm voting no. No, we need to keep public funding for our statewide elections. And in fact, we should expand it and also be more lenient on our criteria for public financing of elections. That's my, I think. Because I want the average Joe to be able to run. Let the court of public opinion and let voters decide on who they want. But it should be paid for, for with public dollars in the state of Florida. So, with that being said, I say vote no on Amendment 6. Thank you so very much for watching my channel. And I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash jbfond. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much. And you can watch more of my content here. Mwah. Forehead kisses and have a beautiful day.